one on this site because time is ticking. So I changed the theme real quick of my art studio. If you're not sure how to do that, you can go to Tools, Global Options. Sorry, I'm jumping right into it. <laughs> Appearance, and then you can pick your font and all that. I was not happy with my font. I like the dark theme, but I don't think recording it is the best for the viewer. I'm not sure. You guys can leave me feedback uh, on the comments, and that'd be great. Tell me if you like the darker theme or the lighter theme better for viewing. I don't know if you're looking at this on a phone or a tablet or what, but hopefully uh, you guys can all see it. I have the font pretty high, mostly for you, and because I'm getting old and my eyes can't see anyways. So... That being said, let's talk more about this blog down and Hugo site. Um, I didn't do much. I literally just read a couple of pages and changed one thing, but I want to show you a couple of a couple of important aspects of the sites. Let's go back to files here and make sure that you're in that project. Uh, there's only this is only tutorial number three for the Hugo blog down site. So if you're if you're not caught up, just go back and check them out. That being said, let's go open up this config.toml file. It should be in your directory so and what happens is you have this site here your base URL is going to be the URL that you're going to eventually use don't be uh, don't worry if you don't have one already I do I own cradle to grave r.com don't really use it yet but that's why I'm building this site I want to be able to offer code on there and advice and just you know pull people to the site so I need to get one set up um, don't look now because it's actually, I mean, you can, but it's a WordPress site. So we're going to migrate that. All right. So uh, a lot of these are self-explanatory. Base URL, that's where you're going to put it. Now, if you want it truly free, you can get free URLs from like GitHub or GitLabs or uh, things like that. And you'll have like whatever site you want, dot GitHub or something, dot com, right? But let's not worry about that yet. We're not there yet. All right, so going down, what's your language of choice for the code and your default content language, English, English for me. Uh, then uh, the title would be website of whatever your name is. Let's go with Mark Gingrass. And I want to show you um, a couple more things here. Theme, I don't know what that is yet, so don't. I don't know what that is. There's no point in me trying to explain that one. <laughs> Summary length, I believe that when you summarize, it's how many lines before it goes to like a read more. We can look all this stuff up later. Uh, enable emojis true okay cool um, discuss discuss short name so it's a static site generator but if you have a discuss account uh, which is free d-i-s-c-u-s dot com, you can apply for a uh, site and it'll actually allow you to have comments on the bottom of all your posts so you can actually keep track of comments people just log in with like one button and you'd put that short name which discuss will give you right here and hugo and blog down will do the rest no worries same thing with google analytics and now we have some parameters here. These are the parameters that you have like on a website, like uh, the title, the author, description, et cetera, et cetera. I changed my profile picture just now. I just randomly picked one, but images uh, forward slash mark profile.png. And I'll show you where that is. If you open up your actual uh, site, mine was called uh, test seven. So open up test seven. That's my actual project name. Again, I said don't mess with public. Don't. So what's going to happen probably if you don't pay too much of attention is you're going to want to make changes. You think you're, um, you've are you got it figured out. You're going to go to public and you're going to start making changes. And then when you go to re-render this on R, you're going to overwrite that public folder. In fact, I'll show you how to overwrite that public folder right now immediately. So let's go over here where my face is. And you can see I have a couple of options here. I have build website and I have more. Let's click on more and click on clean all. Now, before I do that, again, I showed you I have a public site here. Clean all. I'm going to click it. I'll save my file. And let's go to here again. Uh, test 7. Double click. I still have public. Well, that did not do as I wanted it to. <laughs> Warning, you're going to ignore certain files. No, that's fine. Let me try it from here real quick. Build, clean all. I might be just going too fast for my own self. Oh, well, that works. So it's gone now. I wasn't going crazy. It did work. Um, you know, what's funny is I, I got these shortcuts for my OBS, and it changes when I type them in. It does stuff to, to my icons. <laughs> at least it didn't delete anything. So anyway, so there's no public folder. That's what I'm trying to get at. Fine and dandy. Let's see. Um, also, if you happen to get the public folder, let's do that. Let's build. So I'm going to click on build website again. I'll do it up here so you can see me. Um, 
install and restart hmm actually let me see if there's a different option here build website save selected and exit with one status that's normally not good oh here we go so my hotkeys they killed me again line 20 I have a plus and a minus those are my shortcut keys I have a control alt plus and minus for shortcut keys now save it <laughs> and build website the struggle is real so it's built and now it's going to open up in the actual R Studio viewer and you can see that it's not looking good right don't worry about that yet you're also going to notice when you go to your public folder which you're not supposed to go to click there go to index you can pull it right over you will notice that it also does not look good that's because these sites require a server so we're going to have a simulated server by doing serve site so we do blog down serve site and I've showed you this but I'm just kind of trying to give you some more lingo of what's going on now you see in the viewer it actually served it correctly but also also I did serve site where did I do serve site um, I was already serving it and so I don't have the IP address offhand so let's just do you don't have to do this unless you don't have the IP address blog down stop server and then serve site so it'll give me this IP address right here, and you can just copy that IP address and put it in your browser. I believe I've already shown you this. Uh, let me pull a browser over and show you. I copied it, and we'll paste it right in. And now it's showing up the correct way. You can have uh, links working. The links are definitely working on here. You can click on the post. You can see the different stuff in the post. You can see my squashed out, weird looking picture. Um, so yeah, it's all there. You can leave this up if you want and make changes or not. Uh, the images are under, let me show you a couple things about the directory structure. So on test 7, it, don't mess with public, but if you go to static, this is where you might want to store your images. They're under images. So mine is called markprofile.png. Caps do matter, so you've got to get that right. And if you make it relative versus absolute, which absolute would be you know this entire path, C drive, users, mark, don't make anything absolute, just make it relative. And that means for here, you just need to put, hey, my base directory slash images slash mark profile. They'll always start at the base directory. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, let's move down a little bit. So that's how I got my picture changed. I just literally just typed mark profile instead of the profile.jpg that was there. So main sections, post, um, scroll down a little bit. I don't, uh, the math settings, it'll it'll do LaTeX or KTEX or whatever you want to call it, MathJax. Uh, so you can actually have mathematical, uh, let's see if I can show you one here. Probably not because I'm there. I wonder, yeah. So you can see if I scroll down, there should be some math in here somewhere. Well, even if there's not, I think you understand what I'm talking about. Math should work in there. If not, we'll troubleshoot it later. Okay, so it looks like uh, social icons. Icon, FA, LinkedIn. So it looks like LinkedIn. Here's the title. And you can put your own LinkedIn URL in there. So whatever that might be, I think I could probably pull mine up. I don't use it very... I don't use it very often. So I think my LinkedIn is called linkedin.com slash maybe my name. Let's see. Nope. Well, figure that one out later too, but I wanted to show you, you can put your URL there, and you will, I'm sure, after this video. Same thing with GitHub or anything you want. And if you want to add more, you know, you can just kind of see how this uh, pattern is. So just copy all of this, and you could put in, say, uh, Etsy or something. So you'd put an icon that you like, whatever icon you can download. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, and then the title, and then the actual website. It's that simple. And so let me see if I could find it on the actual page. So it looks like right here, these are where it's at. So LinkedIn, GitHub, Instagram, and Mail. So it's all right there, very simple. And that's what these links are here, simple as that. Menu items. So the menu items are going to be, let me pull it up again. At the top, you have home, post, and about, but they're not drop downs or anything. So let's see if I click on post or about, 
Yeah, there's no drop down, so it's not too fancy. So we should be able to easily figure this one out. We can make them fancy, I'm sure, but looks like you have some sort of main menu and menu.main. So follow the pattern. You can get um, you can get the idea, you know, because we just saw home, we saw post, and we saw about. Here's the idea of how to do that. And the weight is probably the position of where it's at. So 100, 200, 300 is my guess. So how far apart you want them to be from probably a starting point. And that's it for the Tomo file for now. There's tons of options you could put in here. You might see some stuff, uh, relative URLs equals true, things like that. But for now, keep it like this. And just I wanted to show you that it wouldn't work if you go to the public folder and check it out uh, because you're not serving the site. You have to serve the site. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a, not in this video, but in the next one, we're going to create a GitHub account and a Netlify account. And we're going to try to put this on the web. And then we're going to use R, which is right here. And we're actually going to um, have a, a button up here uh, soon enough that you click one button. And so when you make your changes, you click your button that'll commit your code to GitHub. And then Netlify, Netlify is going to monitor github's folders and when it changes it'll update the site and you can actually set that up to be your own domain name not a given domain name uh, but if you want truly free you have to take the one they give you basically probably somewhat customizable but having like a netlify or a github uh, extension of some sort but so you can play around with all that stuff in there i will show you a couple more things but not too deep here So let's go back to test seven this is where my project is under content, public, static. So under public, we never mess with, remember, because that's going to be generated and rendered and it's going to change every single time you make changes and build your site. Themes, when you do want to play around with other themes to make changes to your themes, um, you would have to mess with this. And we'll get into that later on. But it, uh, for now, we'll leave the theme that we built it originally with. And so under content, let's double check here. We have posts. Um, don't worry about that, but the static is important. Under static, you have post and images. So what you have is under post is, uh, well, I could be, uh, I am definitely wrong on that. I'm trying to find something. I think it may be under content. Hmm. I was looking for, maybe it's under themes. Ah, it's under themes. Sorry. So it's been a long time. I played with this a long time ago, got it to all work, and now I'm redoing it. Um, I'm talking like a year and a half, two years ago. So under themes, this is where something's important, but not today. We're not going to go there today, but under layouts, you're going to have different things called default and partials. And so a default is, hey, a single HTML page is going to look like this. It's going to have a pattern to it. A single list, a list of like, here's my list of blogs. Do I want 10 or 20? Do I want it to look like this or that? Um, so those are the things you can play with eventually. And partials is the same thing. If I want a header or a footer, how do I want all of them to look? And so when Hugo and Blogdown are rendering all of this stuff, it takes those themes and those layouts and says, this is how they want every single page to look. And it builds it for us. So don't get too far into that yet unless you know a little bit more about the uh, structure of a Hugo site and the HTML underlying it. And it's not just HTML, it's actually the Hugo, I guess, standard language to use. You'll see some weird, crazy brackets and stuff like that. But that's it. I wanted to show you that. And don't forget, if you restart your R, your serving, your site will go away. And just always remember that your links and stuff will be broken until you serve that site. So don't get uh, too alarmed about that. So play around, get these set up to be your parameters, maybe add a menu item or add a link, and let's see what you come up with. And in the next video, I think we'll create the, uh, the sites. So just wanted to give you one quick update. Have a good one.